Hey y'all, I'm Lane. Welcome back to Manly Kitchen. Now today I'm going to do spaghetti bolognese. And of course that's a spaghetti sauce with meat in it, but there's also some other things you can put in there to add to the flavor and to dress it up and have a little fun. And you know me, I'm all about fun in the kitchen, right? So follow along and let's see what we got here today. Okay, got my big old pan ready. Before I put it in, I'll just show you real quick. I've got some chopped carrot, some chopped celery, and onion. Now, the carrot I shredded and then chopped down. The celery, I took the two stalks and I sliced them lengthwise into quarters and then chopped very fine. Of course, the onions, you know how to do that. So, these are two things that you don't have to have in the spaghetti bolognese, but they are part of the original recipe and they sure do add to the flavor. So I like to do them whenever I've got them in the fridge. If I don't have them, I don't cry about it. I just move on. I'm going to stir the coat. Now we're just going to let that saute for a minute or two. Okay, you can see the onions are starting to get transparent. Uh, you can't smell it like I can, but I can smell it, and I know that it's to the point where I can move on. And so I'm going to move that out of the way and put my meat in there. Now this is about a pound and a half, give or take. I got a bulk pack and knocked it down so I can use it on a few different nights. Now we're just going to let that brown up. You can see that the meat has been browned thoroughly. Now I'm ready to start adding other stuff. And i got two things I'm going to do before the tomatoes go in. First I'm going to put a nice healthy spoon of garlic in there. And just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Not even a tablespoon. Just a little bit. And that's one of my secret ingredients. First, I'm going to get those through the meat. Then I'm going to get the vegetables in there. Now, before I get the spices in, it's time for tomato stuff. And I can't tell you why this works, I just know it does. We're going to get everything else out of the way. You can see I got the top of the can open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the bottom of the can too. Hopefully, I don't drop it in the meat while I do it. Having that air hole in the bottom allows the stuff to just slide right out. And you can see this is a large can. There's a reason for that. Now, getting it onto the bottom of the hot pan for just a minute just kind of gets rid of that can taste. And again, I don't know why it works, I just know it does. Alrighty. Next, a big old can of tomato sauce. And another big old can of diced tomatoes. Now you can use whole tomatoes if you want, I prefer diced. But, as I like to say, that's just me. Boy, look at that, huh? Oh, 
already looking pretty good, isn't it? Okay, now it's time for the spices. And one good bay leaf. Just a little sprinkle of thyme. Looking for about a half a teaspoon there, maybe just a touch more because it's a little more meat. Good couple of teaspoons of oregano. And I like to do about 50% more basil than oregano because I like that sweet basil taste. Then we're going to put just a splash and a half of wine. That's optional. You don't have to use it if you don't want it. For, you, for those of you that are worried about alcohol, fear not because the alcohol is going to get boiled out of it before that ever gets to the table. Just a couple more things to go. I'm going to put some mushrooms in there. You do not have to do this. Mushrooms are entirely optional. In this size recipe, I've been known to put as much as a pound of, uh, of mushrooms. I only had six ounces today. That's okay. I'm just using what I got. And now, this is a secret ingredient that I learned from an Italian mama. My best friend's mom as I grew up. Just a, about a cup of milk. If you're lactose intolerant, obviously you're going to skip this step, but boy, if you're not, I really recommend you go ahead and put the milk in there. It just makes it so much richer. And finally, I like to knock the acidity of the tomatoes back with just a little bit of sugar. If you've never done this before, I recommend you start with one level teaspoon let that simmer in, see how it works for you, add a little more. Now, some people will sweeten it up enough that you can actually taste the sweetness. Um, I have a friend that learned that from his mom and he calls it sweet meat spaghetti. I'm not looking to do that. It, it's very good, but that's not what I want. I just want to knock the acidity back just a little bit. I'm going to let that simmer in before I decide whether I need to adjust my seasonings or not. So I'll be back with you later. Alrighty, look at that happy sauce. It's been some time since I saw a pot of sauce that happy, I mean to tell you. And it's been simmering for about an hour and a half now. And it's going to simmer quite a bit longer, but it's, it's gone enough that I could check my seasonings. And it was actually right where it needed to be, so I didn't add anything to it. And just kind of checking it, making sure that it stays happy. And I'm going to let it simmer for at least another couple of hours. Uh, depending on my schedule tonight, it might simmer as much as six or seven hours before I finally serve it. And, you know, I think that it's important that you let it simmer for at least a couple of hours. But once you've gotten to a couple of hours, you can go ahead and serve it. It'll be fine. But you know that whole thing about how spaghetti sauce and lasagna and chili, they're all better the next day. It's because the ingredients have had a lot more time to get to know each other. That's why I like to simmer things longer if I can. So, back to being happy in the pot. I'm about to show you my secret 
for pasta that doesn't stick together and tastes wonderful. What you want to do is put just a little bit of oil on there. And now Just like that. And what that does is gets a little bit of oil on each piece of pasta. That'll keep it from sticking together and also it gives it some really good flavor. It's not something you can pull out by itself. It's just that the pasta just tastes more robust, you know. So uh, keep this in mind. You can do this with any kind of pasta, you know, the bow ties, uh, penny, anything. Just a great way to add a little bit to your recipe. Now I ask you, is that just a happy, happy pot of sauce? I mean, now you might notice that it's uh, a lot less than I started with earlier. Uh, that's because I already sent some home with the neighbor and let them in on the feast. And that's always fun to get to do. Now, let's go ahead and plate up. Right about there. First thing I'm going to do is get myself a nice generous portion of pasta. Now here's a little trick for you. Just dust it a little bit with uh, Parmesan cheese before you ever even get the spaghetti on there. Next, a goodly bit of sauce. Then I'm going to take a little bit of mozzarella cheese. I don't put a lot on there. I'll let people do more at the table. And for myself, I like to put just a little bit of crushed red pepper. And then I'll put that out on the table for everybody else. Piece of Texas toast there. Piece there. And that's it, folks. Time to eat. I gotta tell you, I, I'm shocked. I, that is the best bolognese I've ever done. I, I don't know what was so darn different, but it just, everything blended beautifully. I think a lot of it was letting it sit for so long on a very low simmer and letting everything get to know each other, you know? Um, some of the things that I wanna remind you about though, some of the little tricks, the celery and onions and carrot, you want to chop them very, very finely so that they pretty much disappear in the sauce. A uh, little bit of Worcestershire brings out that beefy flavor in the ground beef. And then that cup of milk, you got to have that. Even if you let the wine go, make sure you put the milk in because that really makes it rich and it also kind of softens everything, you know. So uh, anyway, that's spaghetti bolognese. And this is Manly Kitchen, and I'm Lane. Y'all have fun with that. Let me know what you think. Leave me some comments, and I'll see you in the kitchen next time around. Peace, y'all.